Hi, and welcome to our webcast today on MBA Student Insights, Women at the GSB. Uh, my name is Tolu Alabi, and I'm a first-year MBA student here at the GSB. And today I'm joined by um, Rishi Lili and Val Young, who are both second years and about to graduate. Um, we'll be talking about the student experience here on campus, and we're here to answer as many questions as you might have. To submit a question, um, just click on the chat button at the top of your screen, put in the question, and click send to all the panelists. Um, so today we won't be talking about anything related to admissions process or the application or financial aid, but people from the um, staff from the MBA admissions office are here to answer your questions. You just type the question into the chat box. Um, so let's start with some introductions. Um, Rishi and Val, please just tell us a little bit about yourselves, where you're from, what you did before the GSP, and what you're looking to do after graduation. So, okay. Yes, Rishi, you can go first. Yes. Yeah. Um, I'm from Texas, born and raised, went to University of Chicago for, uh, for undergrad, and then spent four years in Chicago doing executive search where I helped build a digital health practice, and then came here. Um, and after school, I'll be doing health tech. Nice. Thank you. Thank you, Rishi. Um, do you want to go ahead, Val? Hi. Um, I'm Val, and I am from New Hampshire originally, went to Bowdoin College in Brunswick, Maine. I graduated in 2008. Um, Shortly thereafter, I moved to D.C., and I spent about um, six years after college before coming to business school in politics. Most recently, I was in the U.S. Senate as the chief of staff. Um, over the summer, I worked at the Boston Consulting Group in San Francisco, so I'll be going back there after graduation. Um, I am interested in hopefully starting something on my own at some point, but i um, spending a little time in consulting before figuring out exactly what my career path will be. Nice. Thank you, Mel. <laughs> um, so for me, again, I'm Tolu Alabi. I'm originally from Nigeria, and I moved to the U.S. about seven years ago for college. I went to Grinnell College in Iowa. I double majored in computer science and math, and after that, I worked as a programmer at Goldman. Um, and then I did that for two years, and then came to the GSB last September. So after, after the GSB, I'm looking to remain in technology, but but do something more like business development related versus being a programmer or software engineer on, on the tech side. So let's get started with questions from you guys. <laughs> um, so the first question is, what's it like for women at Stanford, both inside and outside the classroom? You want to start? Um, sure. So I think I was um, pleasantly surprised, actually, by the sort of climate and atmosphere for women here. Um, our class, at least the class of 2016, I'm not sure about the, the class for the next year, was about a 60-40 split, male to female. And we had one of the highest percentages of women um, at the GSB in history. And so that's been really nice. Um, I think that I have found a really supportive group of male and female friends here. Um, I definitely have found there are some challenges coming into a place that, or into an industry sort of as a whole that has been um, historically male dominated. And I think the GSB and the student body are working through that and sort of making progress as we go along. And I'm happy to obviously talk about that a bit more. Um, but by and large, I've actually found it um, much more inclusive than I even anticipated coming in. Um, so that's been really nice. I think the thing I'd add on to that is, I think starting our year, we um, started, we have this uh, women in management board and we started having formal members who were men women um, join and we've had such a huge movement of um, of guys being involved in women and uh, you just feel the support for what used to be considered women's issues is just issues that we all talk about and we all think about um, so there's definitely an open environment to talk about what it means to be a working mom or two or just like a working parent rather than saying working mom um, and conversations like that, which is, which is really great and refreshing. I actually was thinking of one other thing that there's been some really great formal stuff that Stanford has done. I think informally, one of the things that um, our classmates have really pushed is um, diversifying some of those kind of side conversations and group meetings and things, particularly about entrepreneurship and the startup world. So I think we found in the first quarter, maybe first two quarters, there were a lot of male 
groups that were having informal and formal conversations about um, entrepreneurship. And uh, for whatever re reason, women weren't really as um, integrated into that. And I think women were having their own separate conversations. And I know a few classmates of ours um, made a very concerted effort to start bridging those two groups together, um, start thinking about forming startup teams together, and um, just kind of allowing that ecosystem to cross over between male students and female students. And that has been something that I've really appreciated, um, you know, going forward, because I think it, those are the informal networks and informal groups that start to really make a big difference as you, as you move through your career. So. Thank you. Very good point. Um, so the next question is, how do you think about timing to get your MBA in terms of stepping out of your career for two years and possibly starting a family someday? I can start with that one. Um, I, I think getting your baby is a little bit similar to having, or getting your MBA. <laughs> yes, exactly. Getting your MBA is a little similar to having a baby, which is there may be no perfect time. Um, I think one, one time when it is a really good time is if you want to pivot, and, and especially with regard to having a family. I know a lot of families actually have a baby while they're at the GSB, maybe in the second year, because that seems like a good transition point. So I guess my advice would be figure out first, is this, is this something that you really want? Is this something that's going to benefit your career? And then really think about how and why. Um, and then just after that, if you want it and if you want a family too, just decide how you're going to start piecing those things together. It will never be perfect. The timing will never be great. Um, but you can do it. Yeah, I, I would say um, as somebody that um, got married in my first month of business school, um, I would echo <laughs> Rishi's thoughts that like the best laid plans, you know, uh, always go awry. Um, so I had worked for about six years before I came. I think, again, to Rishi's point, it felt like I had had some really awesome and interesting accomplishments and I was ready for some new challenges. Um, I think spending some time thinking about when and why you want to go is really important and I would sort of prioritize that. Um, the family stuff... I think is tough for women at any point in this, in our careers at business school and, you know, career trajectory thereafter. And, um, and it's something that, you know, you and your family and your partner have to spend some time thinking about. I think that business school, it'll fit into your life however you need it to fit into your life. Um, if you're doing something like I'm doing, which is kind of going into a consulting firm where you're going to have a couple of years where you may want to, um, not have kids at that point in time. You may want to think about applying a year or two earlier than you might. Um, I mean, I'm 30. I'm probably slightly on the older side at the GSB um, or average older. And it is something that we thought about at one point, like what time, will, when will we graduate? When do we want to have a family? Um, so I think you make it work, but it's something that you may want to at some point kind of look to the future and start backing out and saying, um, what are my goals? Because I think your family goals... Um, are as important as your career and your education goals, and you should just make sure that you're thinking about those two things in tandem. But I will say I think the GSB is a place where it can accommodate whatever you choose and whatever needs to be accommodated in your life. So um, so don't let it be a hindrance, but I would, I would be thoughtful about it. Yeah. Makes mm -hmm. sense. Yeah. Thank you. Um, next question is, are there unique opportunities for women in the MBA program who are interested in pursuing a career in the nonprofit? sector? Uh, That's a great question. I don't have, I did not pursue a career in the nonprofit sector. I think you might have a... So I, um, I mean, I came from the government sector, which is different but related. Um, there is the um, Social Innovation um, Career Services Center, and I think that they have done a really great job at building out a pretty robust um, both curriculum for folks that are interested in nonprofit management, um, you know, other sort of social innovation type fields. And then um, they have a special um, certificate that you can sort of apply your credits towards. And I think some really great counselors and advisors that have had quite a distinguished career in those fields. Um, so I would say I've kind of like dipped in and out of that a little bit. I will be getting the certificate. Um, but I haven't probably utilized it to the degree that some of our classmates that are very focused on nonprofit sector have. Um, that said, I think through 390s, which are our independent studies, um, through you know the CSI program and a few others, there's a lot of opportunities to, um, both within the curriculum and outside the curriculum, design um, 
sort of study and internships and externships that allow you to get involved in the nonprofit sectors. You may have to be a little bit more creative if they're not tech or they're not San Francisco or Palo Alto um, affiliated or located. But I think that there is um, there there's a lot of support here and a number of resources to help you be successful. Yeah, thank you for that. Just one thing I would like to add is actually about the social innovation trips. Oh, um, right. Yeah, so we have uh, social innovation trips, like just like every other study trip. Um, but this these trips are just concentrated on and focused on social innovation, I guess. Yeah, so we have, I know we have a bunch to countries in Africa. So we have one to Rwanda, Uganda, maybe South Africa next year. And men, women included, they all go on these trips. But these trips are a good example of how you actually get to see the practical applications of different products and different innovative ideas mm. on people's lives and how it actually impacts people in Rwanda, Uganda, or Kenya. Mm. So like that's a very, very unique opportunity that you can explore if you and feel I, interested. I don't know yeah. if there are any women-specific opportunities. I do know that two of... Uh, Alina won an award, right, for social mm-hmm. innovation mm-hmm. and some and a scholarship mm-hmm. for for the yeah. GSV. Also, mm-hmm. Alina, I think, and Ashley, right, are starting mm-hmm. their own yeah. nonprofit business. Mm-hmm. Um, and so there are w- women killing it at the GSV <laughs> mm-hmm. um, in in the nonprofit sector. And, and there is, I don't want to misspeak because I don't know enough about the specifics, but there is a good amount of um, matching funds and fundraising available for students that over the summer want to do nonprofit work um, if mm-hmm. they're working at a 501c3 and also um, obviously like really great loan forgiveness programs yeah. for those that go into exactly. nonprofit work after the GSB. Um, mm-hmm. So those are two things that I, I'm sure the admissions and other staff members here could talk about in more detail, but there's there's quite a bit of financial um, assistance that's provided as well. So. Thank you. Um, so next question is, how many of the teachers and faculties are women? Do, you, do, we have a, do you know a percentage? I don't know the percentage. I do know that some of our most rock star faculty members are women. Um, we have Maggie Neal for negotiations. I'm actually doing an independent study with her. She's an incredible human being, fantastic <laughs> researcher. Um, we have uh, Deb Grunfeld. Grunfeld. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Who um, coupled who with Amy Cuddy, they did the work on power um, poses. Um, those are two of my my favorite professors. Do you have? Yeah, I, I would say, um, candidly, I think there are not ed- enough women faculty um, at the GSB. My intuition tells me that that is probably true across most of the business schools, certainly most of the top business schools. Um, I think the GSB, I know in their dean search and in other communications that we've had with the administration, has really focused on being particularly proactive about um, increasing the numbers, especially as we get up to the tenure level. Um, it's not, I think, where many of us would like like it to be in a perfect world. Um, but there are some really fantastic women, and I think they get a, a lot of support. Um, Ann Beyer, who was my first year accounting professor, won um, the Distinguished Teaching Award from the students one year, which is the student-given award to the best teacher at the GSB. Um, so, yeah, I don't have a number and percentage. Um, I think the percentage would be lower than what most of us in this room would like it to be. I think that's a problem sort of across the board um, in academia at, at this level and in this in this sector. But um, it, but it's something that we talk about quite a bit, the administration talks about quite a bit, and, you know, is trending in the right direction. Absolutely. I do think women faculty are celebrated. Yes, definitely. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're doing amazing things. Um, some of them are, like, far outshine their male colleagues and their male peers but I think you know in in a perfect world there'd be more of them and I think there will be more of them um as as yeah. time goes on so. yeah another faculty who's doing great work Carol Robin yeah oh yeah Carol amazing. Amazing. fantastic right. program. Exactly. amazing exactly. yeah well thank you for the very honest answer um next question what has been your favorite experience at the GSB uh mine is That's talk fine. it's uh <laughs> It's not a, there, I mean, there's been a million classroom things um, and a, a number of professors that I'm super close with, but my favorite thing about the GSB is um, talk, which we do, um, it's the whole the whole school and community is invited, but mostly you do it with your class, and it's kind of like Moth Radio Hour, if anyone has ever heard of that. It's basically 30 minutes or so, where um, or an hour once a week at night, um, where everyone packs into the MBA lounge, and two people give about a 30 minute talk of their life, whatever they choose to focus on. Um, it, it's in those moments when I'm at the GSB that I'm like 
just reminded of what a wonderful, fantastic community we have. And I feel um, most grateful for being there, for getting to know these amazing classmates, for hearing stories that are so different um, and so, um, you know, impactful. And I think that, that that's something that will stick with me um, for, for decades. So I want to add on to that um, and then I'll share my favorite. Um, I think another really special thing about talk is how people are able to share um, things that they wouldn't usually share in a, in a different setting and in creating that not only a safe space for that, um, but also celebrating it and loving it and us, bringing us all closer. It, it's a really wonderful and I think unique thing that we have here and I'm sure other places have it as well, but it's really special. Um, for my favorites, I just love getting to know my classmates and that sounds silly, probably, um, but as Val said, they are, e each person has something incredible to share and just warm, wonderful personalities. There are very few people that I wouldn't want to spend time with. And so any of the activities around that. So we have small group dinners where first year you can, you are in a lottery system and you get randomly assigned to, um, you can host a small group dinner with randomly assigned people. So you get to know different people in the class. And that was one of my way to get to know people whom I usually wouldn't run into. And I, and I really love that experience. Some of my really good friendships today came out of that. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. Although you can say C for C. <laughs> yeah, which I ran. <laughs> which ball was in charge? She killed it. In the head of no. C for C. So C for C is challenge for charity. And it's pretty kidding. much... No, I actually really it like C for C. It was awesome. <laughs> I really like it. I've been working so hard to be on leadership for next That's year. That's right. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you also like the CMC committee. I know. I, I like CMC. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, C for C is a sporting event that happens um, hosted by Stanford where um, West Coast business schools are invited to compete in different sports. And Val was in charge of that this year. It was amazing. I played basketball in college, so I brought my basketball skill. Yeah. And I helped Stanford. I didn't basketball. play basketball in college, but I um, <laughs> also brought my basketball yes. skills. And we killed court. it. We killed it. Yeah, it's it was the, really fun. Yeah, it's the culmination of a year-long um, fundraising and volunteering um, competition among nine West Coast business schools. And then um, we used the weekend to kind of, like, celebrate and um bring everyone together so there's 1300 students that come to the GSB and it's it's Amazing. a fantastic weekend. It's really fun. Yeah. And we end with a dance with a dance competition and it's just like yeah. just amazing. Yeah. Do we need a mix next? <laughs> okay, next question. Um has any particular club um including but not limited to the women in business club had a tangible impact on your career in terms of um giving you new opportunities that you might mm -hmm. have not otherwise found? So the clubs are a great place to get new opportunities, any of them, all of them. Um, the way it works is a lot of jobs are funneled through um, the Career Management Center, but the, each club has specific connections with people in their industry, and so sometimes jobs go directly to the club leaders um, and funnel that way. So definitely if you want to be in healthcare, join the healthcare club. If you want to be in VC, join mm -hmm. the VC club. Um, it's, it's a great way to do it. Um, in general... Our network is incredible, and you should use it. So, in, and I need to, I'm just talking about your classmates. So, even more so than the club, if there's a company that you really want to work at, forget if they have a job open. Reaching out to a classmate who either works there or knows someone who worked there and can give you an intro actually really helps in terms, especially if you want to pivot. And your resume wouldn't scream, "I am the person for this job." Mm -hmm. uh, it's a really way, good way to get a foot in there and to advocate for yourself. So I would strongly recommend doing that, not only at the GSB but in life in general. Uh, figuring out how you can use your network to get you into new places. Yeah, I, I think that's that's true. Um, I would say, like, I, I'm a member of the VC club, though I don't have immediate plans to go into venture capital. Um, and there's been just some amazing lunches and dinners and um, opportunities to meet and network with people that I would not probably have other ha otherwise had if I hadn't been in the club or, you know, glommed on to dinners that some of my friends host. Um, in the immediate term, that's not something that I'm going to probably capitalize on, but long term, um, these are some really cool, fun, interesting relationships and um, interactions with people that I otherwise would, would never have been able to make the connection with. So. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I think we have lots of questions, so we'll try to <laughs> answer as many as possible. So the next one is, do you have any plans to transition into a new industry or new role after your MBA? And how do you think the GSB has prepared you so far? So I have very strong opinions on this topic. Um, yes, 
an yes for me. <laughs> um, I am currently still interviewing both. I said earlier I'm going to be working in health tech, either health tech or tech. I'm in the process of interviewing right now. Um, and how has the GSB prepared me for the transition? First, I'm just going to stop here and say, if you come to the GSB or anywhere and you know that you want to pivot, do not take a breather on that. You need to figure out what you want to do, how, what steps need, will get you there and start mapping that out immediately. This is something we talk a lot about MBA two year. There's a lot of do whatever you want during the summer, um, you know, la 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 and that can be wonderful and you may still want to do that and will not regret your decision but you need to do it with full knowledge you can if you want to make a huge pivot using that summer to do it is really key mm -hmm. um it's much easier to get a summer internship in a new function and new role or either or uh, or both um than it is to just do it full time later so just think about that um the next thing i'd say what prepares you to um both your classmates who can help you prepare for the interviews, mm -hmm. um, which is extremely helpful since they've done the jobs before. They've probably interviewed people for those roles before. It's really helpful to use to leverage that. Um, and then on the other side, some classes really help you. If you're going to go into a job where you go and have to do financial modeling and you've never done that before, take financial mod modeling. Um, if you're going to go into operations, take operations. Make friends with the professor. Get to know more about the subject. It's really upon you, though, to know what you want to get out of the experience and to be really focused about getting it. Yeah, I, I would add, so I went into consulting, which was totally different than what I'd done before. I used both the consulting club, the career management center, um, alumni, like a ton of GSB alumni that are in different firms um, to both learn about, sort of show my interest in and then prepare for interviews. Um, I think that in particular, our classmates that offered to do case interviews with me was some of the most meaningful and helpful that I got. So I think um, that is sort of facilitated in part with Career Management Center, in part separately through the consulting club and just people giving their time. So um, I think that that is true across a number of industries. Um, and it's just my experience with consulting. I would also say um, I've been working through Startup Garage on a... Um, startup with another classmate of mine. Startup Grudge is one of, it's a really great class if you're interested in starting something. Um, and that sort of design-centered thinking takes you through a couple quarters of um, really going from zero to 60 on a startup. And that has been really fantastic as far as just introducing me to entrepreneurship, connecting me um, with investors and leaders in the field and other students that are doing something similar. Um, and so that as a class, I think has been like an unbelievable crash course in entrepreneurship, um, which is something that long term I hope to get into. And it's definitely been like kind of given me like the training wheels almost to go and, and do it on my own. So thank you. Yeah. Um, the next question is, are there any specific initiatives, whether classes, leadership coaching mm -hmm. or any of that that's helped prepare women students in particular for a career in traditionally male dominated industries? Acting with power, right? I mean, yeah. I, I, yeah, that's a good, I mean, so I think WIM focuses on it quite a bit through um, different programming and like conversations that they facilitate. Um, I think that there are some really cool classes, including the one we were talking about with Deb Grunfeld, um, which is called Acting with Power, um, which is all about kind of understanding how you present, how you take power, give away power. I think some of the things that we think about when you think about women not speaking up in meetings or how you sit in a meeting or how you approach a difficult conversation. Um, I think, um, I mean, th there's th women in entrepreneurship. Yeah. That's been a great class that's, actually. Yeah. Um, which is also focused. I, I don't know that there are a ton of initiatives focused on women getting into male dominant in dominated industries. There is there are male-dominated industries, and if you're a woman who wants to get into that, all the support in the world to get you there, including male mm -hmm. classmates who were in or will be in those industries, professors who I know have helped some of our female um, colleagues and classmates get into those industries, such as private equity search, um, mm -hmm. the search industry. So, um, I think women in entrepreneurship is a great example, though, of a specific class. So there's um, Professor Fern Mendelbaum, who's in um, investing, angel investing, venture capital, a few other things. She hosts a class specifically around um, sort of encouraging women to 
get into entrepreneurship either by starting something or getting into the investing side and brings in a ton of um, women in the Valley and also men in the Valley that are really supportive of getting more women involved in those industries. And that is sort of soft skills, like how, meeting these people, hearing from other people that have a similar worldview to you and being able to picture yourself in that role. And also some like really tangible um, conversations that we had amongst us about what's holding women back from being mm -hmm. in those industries. What would you look for? You know, how do we start to change the culture? So um, that's a great example. There's also a lot of programming around women um, through the, through the CMC and others, um, just about like public speaking and, um, you can get like one-on-one -on -one coaching and things like that. So, and, and negotiations, negotiations. Yeah. Um, so you know. there, Th yeah, I mean, I think there's, there's a lot of support. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, next question. Do you have any insights on what the experience is like for partners joining their girlfriends or wives at Stanford, especially given the location of Stanford and the living experience here on campus? Yeah. Um, I have a fantastic um, GSB SO, significant other husband, who lives on campus with me. So I live in Escondido Village. Um, I have this awesome one bedroom, um, which is so below market rate in Palo Alto. It's incredible. If I could squat there for the next 10 years, I would stay. Um, <laughs> and I think so my husband, it, it is definitely different, like having a male significant other, like a male SO, than um, what is more traditional, which is female SOs probably. Um, my husband um, loves Palo Alto, which really helps. Um, he says it's like our country club that he gets to come home to. Um, he works in the city. He has made a great network of both other male SOs and then some of my male classmates. It definitely took a little bit of time for him to in, in, uh, you know, get himself into the community. Um, he takes the Caltrain into San Francisco. Um, it's not a perfect commute, but um, tons of people do it. Um, he had like a really good support network. I think the best thing for him, which has been so great is he has been able to tap into the GSB network for his own career, uh, career ideas and, and transition. So he recently moved from energy, clean tech to health tech and really utilized the GSB network for that, both the SO community and the student community. And I think that, you know, what has been the, the nicest thing about this is, you know, my GSB network has become his GSB network and we get kind of double the network, which is really nice. So. I'm going to give a slightly different take. I also have a significant other. He's long distance, um, lives in Chicago, uh, my fiance. And so I will say it's hard. Yeah. It's, oh, yeah, it's definitely hard, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard. Um, like you go from maybe living together, spending all of your, a lot of your time together, even if you're working really hard, to being in, thrown into a completely different environment where a lot of your time is spent meeting new people, doing new GSB things, and it's really, it can be really hard to in integrate your, uh, both both of you to live in, in that world. And I just want to acknowledge it's hard because I think it would be hard at any business school. I'm actually pretty sure it is, um, just given the experience. But just be aware of that and kind of talk about, talk about it and talk about how you're going to work with that. Um, it's all, it's just a difference in lifestyle, a difference in the time you can allocate to your relationship. Mm -hmm. Um, it also, I will say something in some ways it's been easier because he's long distance. Um, so he doesn't have to hang out with Chia Spears all the time. He has his own group of friends and in some ways it's harder because at this point, Val's husband has friends inside and outside mm -hmm. of the class. Um, whom, he, whom he also loves, who have become part of his family, and that happens around second year. So Anshul never quite got there, right? Um, but he never had, like, the rough roughness of mm -hmm. of me, me not being at home all the time because we were just apart. So, Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's definitely a challenge. You have to spend a lot of time thinking about how you allocate your time. I think the one thing you'll realize at business school is um, that time is the precious, precious resource. And so when you have a relationship, um, you need to figure out how you how – you, fit that in with all the other stuff that you have going on. But, um, but lots of people are doing it. There's lots of people talking about it. So Thank we you. all survived it. <laughs> yeah. Thrived you. even. Yes. <laughs> um, so unfortunately we're almost out of time and we still have many questions, but just to summarize this, like Rishi and Val, what would be your final pieces of advice before you graduate? Like, what advice do you have for people watching today, and I guess for me too, since I'm going to be a second year <laughs> next year. <laughs> uh, I think the one thing that I've gotten out of the GSB, and I would say it starts with the application, is this idea of authenticity, um, which my friend Mike Ding talks about. Um, but the GSB focuses a lot on being introspective and being really true to who you are and aligning your both professional and personal uh, 
val uh, um, values and desires to that. Um, and that's and it starts with the application, like what matters most to you? Well, really think about that question. Um, mm -hmm. I did a lot of introspective research when I did my essay, and that really helped me figure out what I really wanted out of the GSB, out of life, out of my personal life, and helped me pave a path forward. And I would, I would say do the same um, for, for you to do the same, because um, that journey will just continue when you're here. Yeah, I think... Um... I would echo a lot of what Richie said, and and in addition, what what made me choose the GSB was the community. Um, I think this is the best place in the world. It's the most um, fantastic group of people and supportive group of people. In your application and when you get here, remember that um, you are an important person, part of that community because of the unique things that you bring. Um, I think I spent the first um, you know, quarter or, or half year even worrying that I wasn't like business school enough or that my background in government wasn't valuable enough. And as I'm leaving and reflecting, um, I'm realizing that I had so much to offer. I have so much to offer that my classmates have a lot to learn from me and I have a lot to learn from them. And so I would say, come in with the confidence that, um, and, and apply with the confidence that you will bring so much uh, to the community yourself. And also remember that you have so much to learn from the people that are here. And I think that when you can embrace that give and take, you'll be in a place to really capitalize on all that the GSB has to offer. Yeah. I, the, I, I echo everything Rishi and Val said. I'll just add something um, that I heard from someone which blew my mind. So <laughs> applying to the GSB, most people see it as a marketing exercise. So marketing themselves and trying to showcase all the great things you guys have done, which I'm sure are great things, but it's, people see it more as marketing. But rather, you should see it as accounting, where you're trying to take stock of yourself. So, mm -hmm. like, you're trying to take stock of your strengths and the areas you want to improve on. So, yeah, you're trying to display those those strengths, but you also want to be aware of what you want to get out of the experience, like those those parts of your life that you want to change or you want to improve. So, even though you want to get into the GSB, like, you want to you want to make sure it's a good it's a good match both for for you and for the GSB. Mm. And just like Rishi and Val said, you want to you want to come through authentic in your in your essay and in your application. Just be yourself, let your personality shine, and just. So we want to get to know do you. Accounting. Yeah. <laughs> do accounting, yeah. Do accounting, not marketing. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So thank you, um, thank you both for joining us today and sharing thank all you. this wisdom. Thank you for joining uh, us. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> thank you very much for joining us. Um, you can learn more about the MBA program on the GSB website and the application for the class. After, for the class starting in the fall of 2017, will be available in June. And if you have any questions um, about the MBA program, you can submit them in the chat box as you've been submitting them. And the peop the staff from the MBA admissions office are available to answer your questions within the next 15 minutes. Thank you very much again, and have a wonderful day. Bye. Bye.